we want to help you, Nikki, and I know you're under a lot of pressure. The, you know, the, um, the ICB, this is the, cl the clinical commissioning group bit of the ICB. Um, but, you know, if I were in your position, I would reach out rather than retrench, and I think you are doing that. Um, so let's continue to do that. But I agree with Andrew, three months is a bit long. And please take on board my, my point about, um, and I say this having been to the Thursday meeting and the meeting before that in Nathan Ewan's Day, people like myself and, and others here today want to help you desperately, but our patients <laughs> can only last so long before we have to agree with those more brutal voices in the audience that are getting absolutely at the end of their tether with, with you know, this problem. When we see other parts of England solving the problem with recruitment, but not our bit of it. Um, and the NHS leaders locally, I think, you know, need to, need to take that on board of how seriously um, that is being voiced at the moment. Um, you know, we want to stay allies, but we can only do that for so long if the public do not get what they feel is absolutely critical. So you've heard that from all across um, the political spectrum this morning. If I can just make three brief points then to sum up on this item. So what we have heard today is that in fact the meeting of the ICB that I and 89 other people in, uh, attended, um, including two members of parliament, Mayor Dave, leaders of the council, many councillors, Health Watch, we all were at that meeting, 90 of us, and we heard that health hubs were not being funded. However, we're hearing here today uh, and we did hear last week that in fact that's not necessarily the case. They have not been taken off the table by the NHS. Central Beds Council continues to have them in the, um, the, uh, the long-term budget, what we call the NTFP. So Nathan Buzzards is still in there, Houghton Regis is still in there, Douglas Wades is still in there, and the rest of the beds, the Amptal um, Flitic area. They're all still in the budget, but that's the Central Beds budget for building the thing. We need the NHS to find the revenue to staff it and pay the utility bills. And we're hearing here today that that has not been taken off the table by the NHS. That's a good thing. The second thing I would say is, to be fair to the NHS, this report on page 18 uh, does show that they have increased the number of direct primary care practitioners um, by a net increase of 13. It's gone up from 75 to 88 in the last 12 months, and that's just within central Bedfordshire. So they may not be GPs and uh, nurses, but they are nevertheless primary care practitioners that can and do help. So we have seen an increase. I think that's important for the media and the public to hear. We have seen an increase. Um, however, the demand we're being told is outstripped those 13. <laughs> so the phone continues to be clogged up. And the third and final point I would make, and I know Nikki agrees with me on this, but I think they might be able to be helpful here. Calling PCNs things like Hilton and Titan are deeply unhelpful um, because we don't know where they are. <laughs> we have to spend time finding out that Hilton um, is in fact Amptill and Barton the Clay and Titan is in fact Tonington and Houghton Regis, etc. Please take back that this committee and other bodies are frustrated at the, the nomenclature that is employed by some of the PCNs, the, what they call themselves. I know it's entirely up to them and you can't do anything about it, but please tell them that you continue to be given a hard time by members of parliament and central Bedfordshire councillors as to where the heck is Hilton and Titan? That's so unhelpful. Thank you very much. I'm no doubt we will come back to this issue. And I really am grateful to you, Beth and Nikki, for coming here today. Um, and you will understand our position as elected members that, you know, we have to give it to you, warts and all.